In a world of digital to-do lists, what use do we have left for paper, journals, notebooks and diaries? Especially at university where everything is going towards paperless, tech-filled lecture theatres. So, when I saw all over social media people talking about bullet journaling, particularly my favourite creators, I decided I wanted to check it out. I started using this uh, just before my fifth year of university started in September. So I've been using it for nearly the entire term. So let me take you through how I've been using it, so what I've actually put into the journal what it's been good for, um, what it's not been so good for, and then how will I use it in the future. So bullet journals are super flexible, so you can choose exactly what you want to put in it. Now you'll see from all of the B-roll that I've kept it incredibly simple. The first page is pretty much always a key in most people's journals, just so you can denote what each sort of bullet or cross actually means. Yeah, so I wanted to try out all the different spreads that I'd seen on YouTube. So I had things like a year at a glance, uh, I also used a month at a glance for the first couple of months um, and you'll see later why I stopped using those. I then also saw an interesting uh, idea which was a tracker for sleep, mood and stress. So I've been using that for the past couple of months. I've also um, got a check-in or monthly check-in page where I can check in with my emotional health, my physical health and sort of spiritual faith health. I also have a brain dump section and I've just split it into two. One is just personal so it's basically anything that I want to just check on the page and I also have a YouTube one because I like to sort of brainstorm some ideas in there. I also have a gratitude section which basically is every single day of the month I will write down something that I was grateful for that day. Even if it's a really rubbish day, I'll try and find something in that day that I was grateful for. Um, and that sort of just helps you to remind yourself that there are things that are good in your life even when things are going rubbish. I then also have a very, very simple weekly planner or to-do list, which is just these sort of horizontal lines. And I can just write down using that bullet journaling sort of key I was telling about at the start. Um, you can write down what tasks, what events and things you've got for that week. And then I eventually developed uh, a section that I called the journal section which effectively was just two pages of blank paper where every week I could write a bit of journaling in there if I felt like it. There was no pressure to do that so I wanted to just include that section uh, for me as I, I found that beneficial over this term. Something I came up with that I hadn't really seen from other places was a list of TV shows or books that I really wanted to read. Um, because quite often you have conversations with people and you'll forget all these books and TV shows that they recommend that you kind of want to watch. Um, so I just decided to create one in here so that I could uh, keep it all in one place. So yeah, that's that's how I used it. So what was the bullet journal actually good for whilst I was studying at university this term? So for me, the most useful was probably the weekly planner or to-do lists. Uh, this was just a place where if I had lots of things on my mind and I just needed to get them onto paper, this was the place I did it. In the past, I've normally just chucked it onto a note section on my phone or a piece of paper on the on my desk. And it's all been quite cluttered and random and I, you know, you, it's so easy to lose track of all these things. But having it all in one place, I think really has helped a, a bit. Um, there have been times where I've not had it with me and that's something that I'll talk about later. Um, but having a, one place where you can chuck all your to-do lists and things is quite helpful. Now, one thing that I, didn't expect to be one of the best things was the daily gratitudes, which I mentioned um, in how I use it. As I said, it's really quite helpful. It's probably the most beneficial actually when you have a bad day and you're feeling a bit rubbish and you feel like everything's against you. And actually forcing yourself to reflect on one thing that was good from that day that you're grateful for, um, I think really is quite a superpower and it helps you to realize that not everything is going uh, bad in your life. Um, so I think that can be really helpful. And I found that to be uh, one of the best things about this journal. I also love the brain dump section because it's it's so flexible, um, particularly when I've just suddenly been inspired about an idea for YouTube or something else in my life and I've just been able to chuck it in here really quickly. Again, I'd normally use my notes on my phone and that would get incredibly cluttered and just a huge number of random lists. But having it in here makes it a little bit more organized and it's a lot easier to go back to. And the final point is more of a general point of why bullet journaling is quite cool is that it's, it's so adaptable, like you've got all of these blank pages that you can do whatever you want with. And what I found is that I started with this sort of generic structure that I'd seen from other creators. But in reality, you do not need to stick with what you start with. And as I kept on using it, I realized that there were certain sections that weren't very useful to me, but then other things that I thought could be useful and that I could then include in the next month. For example, what I mentioned earlier, the journaling section. In September, I didn't have the journaling section at all because I hadn't really seen that before. Um, but as I went through the month, I kind of wish I had somewhere that I could write a bit more down. Kind of like the physical, emotional, spiritual check-in, but just a longer section where you can 
write whatever you want. The other good thing about it is that you can scrap the things that you don't really use. I never used the monthly planner to be honest. Um, I must admit I did go and use a digital, digital calendar far more often and that's been far more helpful and I'll get into that in a second with the disadvantages. So as I said the adaptability of the bullet journal is great you can use it however you wish. I will mention the tracker looks cool um, but it's not been like massively useful to be honest it's just it's kind of interesting to look at but it's not been one of the best things about it. So what was it not so good for? I think I mentioned this earlier br briefly but it's it's a physical thing um, so it's really easy to forget you know I'm so used to bringing my phone everywhere or my laptop everywhere but this is easy to forget and if I haven't got it with me then well I there's no way I can access it online or anything like that so it, it is one of these things where you are relying on it for information and you might forget it whereas if you had like a digital to-do list you can access it on multiple devices you can probably log into a random computer or a friend's phone to look at to-do list if you really really needed to initially I was hoping to use this to plan my time and my days out but I just I couldn't do it really um, I went very quickly back to a digital calendar um, as I find that so much easier to plan out my time and I like to be able to plan my days like hour by hour pretty much um, so this is not really a tool for that in my mind it's just for keeping track of tasks another good point really is that it's a physical thing and if you lose it then that's all your information gone and if you've been journaling then there's some probably some personal information in there so you know it, there's a higher risk of you losing personal information and losing something that's quite important to you um, so there's always a risk with physical journals. Uh, you'll hear this in a lot of videos, but it does take ages to set up, particularly things like a year at a glance like this. Um, writing out every single little number takes a very long time. You know, Obviously you'd have to do it once for a year at a glance, and then once you've done the monthly things a couple of times, it's quite easy to repeat. Um, when I was filming the B-roll to set it all up, that took me roughly 20 minutes to do all of that again. The first time I did it, it took a couple of hours though. <laughs> and then a quick note is that it's it's a quite annoying when you forget to keep it updated, particularly the tracker. Sometimes there's been like gaps where I've forgotten to put in how much sleep I had. Um, and being a little bit of a perfectionist, I find it very annoying when there are gaps. Um, so it can be a bit frustrating, but that's not really a big one. So the question really is, am I going to keep using it? And if I am going to keep using it, what will I actually use it for? A uh, short answer is yes, I will keep using it. I'm not going to use it as a planner for my time or anything like that. As I mentioned, calendar is far more useful for me. Yeah, what I will be using it for is keeping track of my tasks um, and then also having these random lists and brain dumps and things like that. Um, what I will say is that quite often when things are going well, it's probably not the most useful thing. But when you're having bad days, that's when the daily gratitude come in helpful. That's when the journaling section comes in helpful. You can process things. And I think it comes in more useful when you're having a bad time than you're having a good time. You, kind of, you can kind of forget about it when you're doing okay. One random side note is that I, this taught me how to do calligraphy with like those sort of brushy pens. So that was a kind of fun little added skill that I've learned from doing bullet journaling. So if you wanted to give this a try, it's very, very easy. All you need is a little A5 or whatever size a dotted journal or diary. I got this from WH Smith, I think like five pounds. And then you don't need any particular pen at all. Um, and you can just start setting up uh, however you like. You can follow what I did or you can look at some other videos. Um, I really like having a gel pen instead of a ballpoint pen because I think the ink is a lot more clear and defined and black and it doesn't smudge like a um, fine tip will. Get thicker pages. I got thinner pages um, so any thicker ink goes through the page really badly. So yeah, overall, I just saw it as a fun experiment, really, and it's, it's been quite an interesting one. Yeah, I'd recommend it if, if you're someone who likes to have a physical journal, um, but if, if you're fine with the digital stuff, then there's there's no real point in really getting it. it it's, it's fun initially, so I, I don't think it's massively beneficial for university students, if I'm being honest, but it's, you know, it's kind of fun. So if you're watching this, you might be a university student, and if you are a university student, then you might find one of my videos that I made about uh, making lecture notes quite helpful. Um, I thought that was hopefully quite a helpful video about different uh, ways of, of making lecture notes and my sort of structure that I use. And there's a quite a helpful tip at the end about exams. Um, so if you want to give that a watch, then um, hopefully that'll be really helpful for you. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.